Hello everybody, I'm Nick and in this video I'm going to introduce you to an extremely interesting type in C-Sharp which allows you to add metadata or properties to another managed type in C-Sharp without actually having access to that other type or without being able to basically change it to just add the missing properties. So have you ever been in a situation where you're working with something and you said, oh, I wish I had these two extra properties here to make my life working with this type easier? Well, with what we're going to see today, you'll be able to do that. And not only that, it also automatically handles the disposal of the associated objects when garbage collection is triggered. So it's very memory efficient as well. If you like the type of content and you want to see more, make sure you subscribe or ring the notification bell. And for more training, check out nickchapsus.com. Now, before I move on, I just just want to remind you that I'm still running my two-day in-person workshop from Zero to Hero effective testing in C Sharp in multiple conferences this year. For now, the announced ones are NDC London, .NET Days in Romania, and NDC Oslo, with NDC Copenhagen and NDC Porto to be announced. In that two-day workshop, I'm taking it from the very basics and I'm explaining everything from unit testing and how to properly do that to integration testing, to mutation testing, and also introduction to performance testing. It is a very interesting opportunity for any of you who can join in any of those locations. And actually, I'm extremely happy to say that NDC is giving me a free ticket to give away to all of you. So check the link in the description to see how you can join the giveaway. And I hope to see you in person. All right, so let me show you what I have here. I have a simple .NET 7 application. And all I have currently in this project is this external object class. Now, please, treat this as something that does not exist in this project. I could have a separate project and move it there, but then when I make the video hard to follow. So just imagine that this we do not own. This belongs to some other code base and we just refer to it. Now, let's say that we have this object over here and we're working with it, but we really wish we could add some extra properties to that object to make it easier for us to work with it. Now, what you might do in that case is you might have an external object wrapper as a separate class and then you would have that object as a property over here so you'd have your main object and then associate any other properties here and work with it but that is a bit clunky i'm not really a fan of this approach and there's actually better ways to do this now some of you might think of the following you might say you know what nick i'm gonna go ahead and make a new class and i'm gonna call that external object extensions and in here i'm also gonna make a separate class and i'm gonna call that external object either metadata or properties. You can name it whatever you want. I'm just going to call it external object properties in this video. And I'm just going to have just an extra property which I want to associate with that other object. So what you might think of doing is the following. You might say, I'm going to have in here a private read-only static dictionary where the key is actually the external object, the thing we do not own, and the value is the external object properties, the extension points. And we can just say data here equals new and the reason why i named this extensions is because we're going to have a public static external object properties method that is called get props or get properties depends on how you want to call it and say that this is an extension method on the external object the thing we do not own and we can't control and then in here all i want to say is if data dot try get value and i want to try to get value with that key that object as the key and then out var value over here so if the thing actually exists then simply return object and in fact i'm going to just invert that and say if it does in fact exist just return it if it doesn't exist then say data and add that value in the dictionary and set it as a new object and then simply return it and that's it and now in the front end the actual experience that the user will have you can go here and say get props text equals nick and then console dot right line i'm gonna say object get props dot text and if i actually run that as you're gonna see i'm getting nick back because now the property is associated in that dictionary with the main object which is an interesting approach however it has a fatal flaw and is the fact that we're using a dictionary now why is that a problem well let me show you why consider the following class what i have here is a class called app or application which has a list of that external object over here, the thing we do not control and I just call it objects. And then I have a run method which creates three of those objects, then adds them to the objects list. And then it also adds them to that dictionary. So it adds the extension points to that dictionary over here. The only thing I did is I changed this to public so I can actually just add the data in. And then I have a clean method that removes the first item 
in that list over here. So now let's go to the program.cs over here, comment this thing out and say var app equals new. Here we go. And then say app dot run and then app dot clean. And at this point, I want to get two counts. I want to get the object count in the object list over here, the one we're removing the first item as part of our operation, and then the counts of the properties entries, which is in this data dictionary over here, the one I just made public so I can actually show you this. So I'm going to just take those and do a console write line first on the object count and then on the properties count. And as you'd expect, if I go ahead and I run this, I'm going to get two in the beginning and three later. And this is sort of to be expected. But here's where the kicker is. If I go ahead and I force a garbage collection event, so garbage collector comes in, sees that there is no longer a reference to that object because now we removed it and tries to delete all the memory that no longer points to that object, then watch what happens. I still have three items in the dictionary. And that is because there is still technically a reference of it. There is a strong reference. So what we need is for this thing to actually be deleted. Now you can say, okay, Nick, you know what? Maybe at the finalizer, maybe this, uh, no, this is too much work. You don't want to have to handhold your code like this throughout its lifetime, just in case of a GC event that you have to manually handle. What you need is the magical type that would make our life easier called the conditional week table. And it's extremely easy to integrate. All I'm going to do is go back to this data thing over here, this dictionary, and change this with a conditional week table. It still has the same set of properties. So it has a key and a value. It's sort of a key value pair. Actually, it is a key value pair behind the scenes, but it doesn't work exactly like a dictionary here. So instead of doing all that, all I'm going to say is return data dot get or create value for that key. And the create value will create a default in that conditional week table for that key. Now watch what happens here. I'm going to just change this to a method because it doesn't have a count property. It has a method now. But if I run this exact same code now with this GC event, watch what happens. I have two here and two here. This is because the key to that conditional weak table is a weak reference, which means that when that main object that really lives in this list is disposed and garbage collector knows that that thing in my conditional week table shouldn't keep it in memory. It's fine for it to be disposed because the main thing that refers to it is somewhere else and it doesn't exist anymore. And the garbage collector knows to come in and delete it. Let's just see it again in slow motion over here. Now, this is something very hard to debug because when you're debugging garbage collection events, the debugger will try to pin it in memory so it's not disposed because technically you're still working with it. But let's try and see if we can actually get it to work. So if I hover over this line over here, I think I'm going to trigger the tracking. So I'm not. All I'm going to do is start. And as you can see here, we have the three items in the objects. I'm not going to do the same for my properties. So I'm going to just over over this and trigger the event. And now, as you can see, my data objects are two, even though there were three in the beginning because GC came in and then it disposed that data. So now you can safely associate something you don't control with something you control and not have to worry that you have to dispose that other object manually. It can be done automatically. It is certainly a more limited use case. And I'm not saying go ahead and put this everywhere. But for when you need this sort of association, this can come in very handy. And in fact, if we had extension properties, not extension methods, it would also look way, way neater than having to have a get method and then set a property on something that is returned by a method which can look clunky. But it's very, very interesting in my opinion. But what do you think? Were you aware of this thing and have you used it? Leave a comment down below and let me know. Well, that's all I had for you for this video. Thank you very much for watching. Special thanks to my Patreons for making the videos possible. If you want to support me as well, you can find the link in the description down below. Leave a like if you like this video, subscribe for more content like this and ring the bell as well. And I'll see you in the next video. Keep coding.